Greetings, and welcome to episode 32. In today's episode, we'll be discussing being undervalued. Are you being undervalued? If you are being treated less than what you are worth, then you are. If you're ready, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, being undervalued. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're being directly abused or beaten. This could be as simple as snide comments, and to cover it, whoever says, well, I'm just joking. It could be that whenever you have an idea, they treat you as though, A, how did you come up with that idea? Or B, you could never do that. Or, I'm using my inflection wrong, you could never do that. <laughs> if you try it, you'll fail. <laughs> but they may not use those words. They'll just do everything in their power to talk you out of it. Or to, even though their words are sweet and sound like they're backing you, their actions say a, tell a completely different story. That's when you know you're being undervalued. Or, how much time and effort are you putting in? in whatever relationship because it doesn't have to be a spouse girlfriend wife husband it could be friendship spouses husbands wives girlfriends boyfriends these aren't the only people that have a chance to devalue you to make you feel worth less than you are actually worth but have a look <clears throat> How much effort do you put into the relationship? Are you getting that same effort in return? If you've got someone's back 100% but they don't have yours, you're being undervalued for whatever reason, whatever reason they could come up with. And a lot of times it's an insecurity on the part of the person who's devaluing your worth. Because they're afraid that if you feel like you're worth something, you might move on from them. And this could be a friend, family member, uh, spouse, what have you, current partner, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But I found that being devalued is just as much your fault as it is theirs. Not at the beginning. When they first start doing it and you notice it, that's their fault. But if you don't nip it in the bud right then and there, then it becomes your fault because you're allowing them to mark you down in price. And it never stops. I mean, because think about it. Every time they do it, you feel a little bit worse. And it's, it's incremental, yes, but you feel a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse and a little bit worse. And then over the years, suddenly... You're in the 90% off bin because they've made you feel that bad. And then, then they get to believing it and suddenly, ah, you're not really worth all that much. So they bail on you when the whole reason why they did that to you is so you wouldn't bail on them. They make you feel less than what you are worth so you don't feel like you can go out and do any better than them. Some people let it happen and they don't realize it's going on. But then when they realize it's going on, then what do you do? What do you do when you realize it's going on and you're married to the person? Then what? <laughs> what do you do then? Because I can't, I can't honestly tell you. I mean, is that grounds for divorce? Is that grounds for counseling? Because in my experience, when you bring it up, nothing changes. Because they'll do just enough 
for as long as it takes to get past that moment, to get through this moment of you complaining and then it's business as usual. It takes about a week usually, a couple of days to a week and then it's right back to where you were and that's if you're lucky. The unlucky ones get a get an excuse. Oh well, you know, I had a bad day, and same day, or you might get that one day, the rest of that one day, from the point you complained till the time you go to bed, and then in the next day starts all over again. So if you're lucky, you get a couple of days a week, a couple of days to a week, I should say, for them to pretend they're fixing it, and then you drop your guard, you let them back in, and you don't even notice the cycle start over again until it gets to the point where you start feeling like crap again. And the different ways you feel devalued, they don't show you you're important. They don't treat you like you're important. Like being treated like, yeah, you're here and we're married, but you're not really part of the family. Or, you go do your own thing, I'm busy. That's probably one of my favorite. Or, I know you have needs, and they don't say these things, this is how they treat you. I know you have needs, but I'm not really concerned about your needs. <laughs> and I really don't even need you taking care of my needs anymore. And they're not saying this, they're treating you like this. My favorite is, I'm not really concerned about your needs, but you need to take care of mine. Because you're not really worth it to put forth the effort, but you damn sure better put forth the effort over here. <laughs> That's probably my favorite. So, it's, it's a safe bet that at some point we've all been devalued by someone or another. Not necessarily a spouse or husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Could be your best friend could be one of your relatives, could be a co-worker, could be just, I mean, not, not your best friend, just could be someone you hang out with a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to be smoking in this video because this video is a topic that irritates the hell out of me because a little of this is still active in my life. That's a lie, a lot of this. And I sweep it under the rug simply because every time I bring it up I get the couple of days to a week and then right back at it and we've discussed it and you just get you just get sick of talking about it you talk to your blue in the face and nothing changes but you're married you're not just dating and you have children now it costs money and you get severely punished for breaking up with this person <laughs> Just for the record, it's not always the guy's fault. <laughs> but yeah. What I need you to understand is, no matter how they treat you, <laughs> the best way for you to get back your worth is A, Stop putting them in control of your happiness because that's how you devalue, that's part of the way you devalued yourself. Because you let them talk you into thinking that happiness, you got to pay for the happiness, you got to do for me, and then, then I'll make you happy, and then they just never paid you. <coughs> that's part of it, that's like a, the main reason. Stop making them the cause of your happiness, don't even make them a participant in that make yourself happy and then when they see they, they can't drive your price down they'll either stop doing it or they'll change their tactics <coughs> I've also noticed that they'll just believe that it's really them making you happy and just think they're the whip shit so either way they, they, they leave you alone to some extent another thing you can do to get back your value is pointed out every time they do it. 
and let them know, no, 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 no. You will give me my due and you will give me what I'm worth. And then if you call them out every time, they can't shortchange you. Because the snide comments, uh, the questionable treatment, that stuff builds up and adds up and adds up. And eventually, it doesn't matter what you believe or how, or how they feel. You're going to eventually vacate that situation. You're going to leave, regardless of whatever consequences. It doesn't matter if you're male. It doesn't matter if you're female. You take enough abuse, you will either leave or that other person will leave you because they've talked you into feeling worthless so you wouldn't leave but now they truly believe you're worthless now so then they leave anyway and they don't even have to devalue you to your face they don't even have to devalue you in close proximity they can go out and about and talk smack about you behind your back to your friends your co-workers to their friends to their co-workers And people can tell a difference when someone feels differently about you. You can tell. You don't know why, and you're afraid to ask, but, yeah, they've just devalued you to X amount of people. Or what's worse, what I've found is worse, because if it's your friends and your coworkers, you can at least defend yourself because they're more likely to come and bring it to your attention. But if it's their friends and coworkers, they'll be running their mouth behind, ooh, excuse me, behind your back, bringing down your value, and then you have to go around these people. Oh, it's a company party. <laughs> or, or can you come pick me up from work? Or can you drop me off? Hey, come in and meet everybody. After you just spend X amount of time ripping this person until they just pennies on the dollar. <laughs> and it's the problem is with them. Now, just because the problem is with them does not excuse you from taking care of it. You have it if they light a fire and you know that fire could burn your house down, you bear you also bear the responsibility of putting that fire out. Just because they started it, yeah, they bear the responsibility of taking care of that, but they're not likely to take care of it. They're the ones that started it. And they started it for a reason. If you just let it burn, you're equally as f at fault. Now, you're not at fault for them starting the fire. You're at fault for not trying to put it out. From the beginning, when it starts, as soon as you notice it, Put your foot down. Say, no, that's not going to fly. And either get that person out of your life <coughs> or you make them see reason. Try to point out where they're failing at and not in the way you're thinking. Oh, well, you snore. No, 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 no. Let them know. Look, this stems from insecurity. I don't know why you feel like you have to belittle me to make yourself feel secure in this relationship. You know, I'm not going anywhere. And because you know I'm not going anywhere, could you please stop? People that feel like they have no control in their lives will use this as a control mechanism to try to control somebody. And even if it doesn't work, in their mind it's working. In your mind it's just pissing you off more and more and more. And see, there's two types of people that do this. The type A wants control. They want control of you. They don't want you to go away. They're insecure. Type 2 wants you to get angry and leave. So they don't have to. Still insecure. Because then they get to say, well, they left me. And they don't have to worry about the consequences of what everybody else thinks of the situation. It's still a form of, we'll say, cowardice or insecurity. But it's for a different end. Instead of wanting you to stay, they want you to leave. 
and they're being very passive aggressive about it. And that's, I mean, both in both cases, it's passive aggressive. I don't want you to leave because you're worthless. That's passive aggressive. I don't want you to stay because you're worthless. That's passive aggressive because they're not saying that. It's low snide comments. It's questionable treatment. It's uh, destroying you to his, his or her friends or co-workers, your friends or co-workers, and then you're left to deal with it. You're left to deal with what's what what comes next, because it's a pretty safe bet. If they treat you like that at home, when you're there, they have no problem doing it when you're not there. If they're at work or out with their friends, they they have no problem doing it to your face. So of course they're not going to have any problem if, if you're not there to say anything about it. And then it's hey, when you come out come and hang out with my friends or come to the company picnic <laughs> no no I would not like to come to the company picnic or hang out with your friends because I don't know what you said about me behind my back because you're trying to control the situation because one of your friends might think I'm cute but if you devalue me they're gonna think I'm as worthless as you do and the funny part is is the person doesn't think you're worthless until you start to buy into it. After so many years, or even it doesn't even have to take years, after so many months or so many years of believing it, you actually start believing it that you are worthless. And once you start believing it, they start believing it. It's no longer a defense mechanism against you leaving. They actually start believing it. Same thing as if they want you to leave. They no longer care if you leave. They're going to leave. Because now they believe you're worthless because you believe you're worthless. And why would they want to hang out with someone that's worthless? And so now they've caught themselves in their own trap. And... There's, I don't know, it could have been stopped. It could have been stopped at the very beginning. Just by pointing out what they're doing and letting them know, hey, like I said, you're not pointing out their failings, you're just letting them know that I know that what you're doing is a form of, it's a form of control. And you only need that mechanism if you're insecure in this relationship. If you're that insecure, let's work on that. Or, it's time for me to go. Boom, you've just put out the fire. Either way, you've put out the fire. Now, someone who's super duper insecure will relight that fire. And then you might want to think about just go ahead and leave and let them burn their house down. But, I mean, if you really care about this person, you're probably going to want to try and, okay, we'll put the fire out maybe a couple more times, but I'm not going to sit here and let this person make me feel worthless. But that's what they do. And like I said, I don't think they mean to do it. They just do it. So then what do you do? After it's all said and done and you get to that, that breaking point where you're ready to leave or they're ready to leave or they've got you where they want you that you're leaving or they've got you where they want you and you just don't feel like you could accomplish anything at this point what do you do well you follow my advice you remove them as your caretaker of your happiness you should have done that way back when you first noticed it but now is the time to do it remember that you are the sole architect of your own happiness nobody else and when you give that right when you give that job to somebody else they have so much power over you they have the power to make you happy and sad don't ever give anybody that power and if you do and they abuse it like that devaluing you undervaluing you making you feel worthless yeah just remember that 
I can get that back at any time. It's not something they can hold on to. It's something that's all in your head that you can say, you're no longer part of my happiness. I'm happy because I'm happy. You're just here. And now I can decide from this point to either work on this, but if it's been X amount of years or X amount of months, you're probably not going to want to work on it. You're going to want to bolt. And whether or not that's what they were trying to get out of it, you should probably up and go. And then don't invite this person back into your life because they have a history of trying to burn the house down. Figuratively speaking, of course. They're not literally trying to burn your house down. Just like they're not walking up and saying, hey, you're worthless. They're making snide comments or questionable treatment where your needs are not as important as their needs. But they go out of their way to let you know that your needs are not as important as their needs. And I'm here to tell you, your needs are equally as important to anybody else's needs on this planet. Unless, of course, there's a man that hasn't eaten in a week, and you've got a fridge full of food, and you're <laughs> kind of hungry because you're bored. Yeah, then, you, then your needs are not as important. But when it comes to emotional, mental, and physical satisfaction, yeah, your needs are just as important as the other person in that relationship. And it doesn't matter if it's just a friend. It doesn't matter if it's a coworker or a relative. Anybody has the power. Anybody you hold their opinion in any regard. Man, itchy nose. If you hold anybody's opinion in any regard at all, they have the power to devalue you. anybody and the only way out of that is to n not care what anybody thinks but that's kind of overkill the best way to do it is yeah you can care what these people think but don't let their opinion control whether or not you're happy you control whether or not you're happy you are the architect of that you build your happiness and you set it sail don't let them hold you in dry dock Or any dock, for that matter. That ship's supposed to sail. You're supposed to be happy. That's one of the reasons why you're here, is to, to discover your happiness, your bliss. And if they're coming in between you and your happiness, you and your bliss, especially in that way, making you feel worthless, yeah, get them the hell out of the way. Straight up, point of fact. You don't need that in your life. Was it? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I cannot, cannot condone treating people that way, especially because I don't treat people that way. When I am with someone, whether it's a friend, relative, my spouse, whoever, I want you to be at your best, because we are at our best when you are at your best, and I am at my best. So when I'm lifting you up, if you're tripping me up, we are not at our best as a unit, as a, as a functioning friendship, as a functioning family member, as a functioning co-worker, as a functioning spouse. We are not an effective team if you're tripping me up. And after a while, that's all you see. You don't see yourself sabotaging it anymore. After a while, and I'm not talking about you being the one being sabotaged. I'm talking to whoever's doing the sabotaging now. You being the person that's doing the sabotage, will you'll stop seeing your part in it, and you'll only see their reaction to it, how they start believing that, wow, I am pretty worthless, I am pretty worthless, I am pretty worthless. And then you'll start thinking that, wow, I didn't have to do anything. They're, they're worthless after all. When you created that, you as the person, as the insecure person in this relationship, whichever it is, work, uh, family, friendship, you created that by making that person feel worthless. But you will go out of your way once you've discovered that they're worthless 
you go out of your way to disassociate yourself from the fact that you caused it and you'll either bail or the treatment just gets worse but it starts from insecurity sometimes it's not even insecure yeah it is insecurity because a person could uh, the 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 what is it the type b person who's treating you badly to get rid of you that's still insecurity they're insecure about being alone so they're doing it slowly build up so they can be prepared when you leave that's a and b they don't want to just come out and say hey I just don't want to be with you because they're afraid of what everybody else will think they're afraid of what you can think that what you will think I gotta give kudos to someone that's got the guts to go right up to whoever they're with or their friends or their relatives or co-workers and say look this between us isn't working I'm just gonna go my way and please go yours it takes a lot of guts or even just don't say anything and just stop showing up even that is a damn sight better than egging it on egging on a relationship with I love you's and cuddles and this and that but on the side you're making snide comments and you're giving this questionable treatment that's see that doesn't fly I don't understand that I don't understand why people do that if you're that insecure maybe you just shouldn't be dating because I guarantee you if someone did that to you and made you feel worthless you'd be the first person to say hey you're trying to make me feel worthless and you would bail from the situation but you're the first one to do it to them maybe if I pick out all their flaws and hammer them in maybe if I point out every time they're wrong and hammer it in or maybe if I just ignore them except for when we're out doing something I want to do hey let's go fishing or hey let's go bowling or hey let's go to the movies I want to do that so while we're doing that I'm gonna make you feel as good as I need to make you feel so we can get through that moment because I didn't want to go do it by myself and all of my friends were busy otherwise I wouldn't have asked you to go and they won't say it but they'll make you feel that way they might even go so far as to chase off all of your friends anyone that has the power to lift you back up to the high price shelf after they knock you down to the discount shelf hmm. I saw something was either yesterday or today it says if you're giving your all and it's not good enough maybe you're giving it to the wrong person and that's a fact that is a fact because nothing you ever do will seem like it's good enough it will be good enough but it won't seem like it's good enough because they'll never give you full credit for it ever because that'll put you back up on the high price shelf and they don't want you up there because when you're up there you're dangerous when you're up there you're confident and you can go out and replace them and see some of the type A's and type B's don't realize that I'm not sticking around because you made me feel worthless and I don't feel like I could go do anything better sometimes we're sticking around because there's a bigger reason a bigger picture involved and I think that's even worse when they're deluding themselves into thinking that you feel worthless and they have power over you in some way shape or form and then when you put your foot down and you and if you put your foot down without saying anything and just put your foot down and stop letting their snide comments and things and the the way they treat you you stop letting it affect you the you know the first thing out of their mouth is are you mad at me <laughs> cuz usually this stuff affects you and it's not affecting you anymore are you mad at me <laughs> And God forbid if they see you happy and 
it's okay if they assume that they're the ones making you happy. If something else made you happy, they will find a way to destroy or diminish that thing that made you happy. Or find a way to use that thing that made you happy to find a way to use it against you. But if they think they're the ones that made you happy, they're just happy as a clam. Happy as a shithouse rat. <laughs> but see, it just, it, it cannot work that way. A relationship cannot work that way. And if that's the way you're being treated, I would, I would say due diligence. If you're, if, due diligence if you're married. Due diligence if you're married and have children. Due diligence if you're not married but you have children. But if you're just friends, or it's a relative, or a co-worker, yeah, cut them loose. And what I mean by due diligence, put forth the effort to try and correct it. Because if you've let it go on too long, that's kind of your fault for not putting your foot down sooner. Granted, it's their fault for starting it. It's their fault for, for continuing it. But if you let them get away with it, you're enabling them to get away with it. So it's like a, a relay race. They run up and hand it to you, and now it's it's automatic, and that's exactly what they wanted. It's automatic. It's you. Now it's you feeling worthless. He only likes me when I'm down here, or she only likes me when I'm down here. So, and I don't mean a couple of smart asses getting back at each other, because I've seen that. I do that myself. A couple of smart asses getting back at each other. That's one thing. But when someone takes great delight when you fall or fail, yeah, that 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 gets old real quick. When you can just feel that they they don't want you to accomplish anything because if you accomplish anything, you might leave. Yeah, that's that's not good enough either. There's got to be a point where enough is enough. There's got to be a point where it's okay, even in your mind, even if you're married, even if you have kids, that it's okay to say, I'm done, I've had enough, and i got to go. I need more out of life, and being treated like I'm worthless is not. It's not good enough. It's just not good enough. You feel insecure, and I get that. But I'm not worthless because you're insecure. And like I said, there's tricks to getting along with these types of people, but why would you do that? Why would you give these, tr use your tricks? You're still down on the bargain basement. Why would you do that? Full price, high price, up here. Confidence, self-esteem. Don't let anybody take that from you. It took you years to develop it. <laughs> yeah, this is a subject I feel passionately about because I've been through it. I've been through it. I, I've been there. I'm there now, kind of. No, not even kind of. But to be honest, I've just learned to deal with it. And I'm not going to teach you how to deal with it. But like I said, there's a bigger picture involved, and that's what I see. And it makes me kind of chuckle that they still feel like they're in control of something using that technique that I've seen for years now. And like I said, when you show that it's not affecting you, the first thing out of their mouth is, are you mad at me? Did I do something? And I say, am I supposed to be mad at you? Did you do something? <laughs> anyway... We're getting on past the 30 minute mark. Uh, good video, I think. Made this one kind of late. But uh, I made it. <laughs> so, if you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can favorite the video if you want. Uh, leave uh, comments down below or a video response. Because I wouldn't mind a little discussion going on. Maybe tell you tell me your story, and I'll elaborate on mine a little bit more. But uh, yeah, if you have learned anything, if you took anything away from this or any of my videos, 
or you just like the sound of my voice, <laughs> feel free to subscribe and keep coming back. We love to have you. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>